You don't have to do it alone. He will fight for us. He will Amen. defeat Amen. our enemies. We're going to go to him in prayer. If you're not standing and you're able, we ask that you do so. We want to lift up a man by the name of Roger Doyle. This is a cousin of Sister Violet. Many of you remember her. She's got severe breathing issues. They've asked that we pray for Roger Doyle. We want to pray for Richard Harmon. This is the father-in-law of Tyler McCuller, which is Sister Patty's son. He uh, is facing heart surgery. He needs a, a touch from God. Speaking of hearts, let's continue to remember Brother Larry Robinson, who is still struggling very severely with illness and heart issues, so pray for him. Let's pray for all the hurricane victims. Um, I know, I would assume everybody may know somebody personally that's been impacted. So we want to lift our nation up. God is the controller of the elements. He knew exactly what he was doing. But we want to lift them up in prayer. We have uh, churches. We have fellow saints. We have family that's been, been impacted. So let's pray that God would move in those situations. Hand lifted up in faith. You want God to fight the battle on? Let's pray for it to them this morning. Father, we lift our hands and our voices. We ask, God, that your anointing would minister to each and every need that's been presented this morning. God, you know the circumstance. You know the situation. You know what the need is. And we know, God, that you are the author and the finisher. We ask this morning, God, for those in need of a healing touch. We pray for Roger Doyle. We pray for Richard Harmon. Father, we pray for Brother Robson. We pray this morning for Brother Blackford. God, the healing virtue would flow into their bodies. God, that you would be the great physician that can touch and anoint. Father, that there would be a testimony. There would be a report of praise. Father, we ask for your will to be done and every unspoken need represented this morning. We come to you asking for you to fight the battle for us. We come to you in your name that is above all names. Asking for your authorship, asking for your anointing, asking for your perfect will. Oh, this morning, God, we know that you are more than able. Father, we pray your anointing and your authorship. Oh, God, your testimony. Oh, for you are worthy this morning. You are worthy, I pray. God, you know the need. Father, we pray right now, reach down. Right now, we ask that you touch. Right now, we ask for your ministering spirit. God, anoint Oh, Lord, to your glory, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. announcements obviously our midweek uh, functions on Tuesday and Wednesday and then Saturday the under construction group which is for ages 7 to 11 will be meeting here at the church from 11 to 1 so remember that and also Saturday is our Spanish service at 630 you can come be a part of that and the next Sunday We'll have our first word and family worship again, but we will be having a special speaker. Brother Holly will be coming and ministering to us, so come and be a part of that. And then if you've got a bulletin, there was an insert that they're starting up a book club. So if you want more information on that, please see Sister Brenda. And you, if you do not know who she is, if you will stand, she's over here to my left, your right. So she has all the information you need. So if you want to be a part of that. We're going to take up our offering and tithe of our ushers will come. Our scripture this morning comes from Luke 6, 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together. And running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, 
with fall. It shall be measured to you again. God uses other people. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you anoint this tithe and this offering as we give out of a thankfulness and appreciation. God, I thank you for this opportunity to be in this house. Anoint and bless and continue to move and touch. In Jesus' name. God is fighting for us. God is on our side. He has overcome. Yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. Carrying our burdens, covering our shame. He has overcome. Yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. In I will live, I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ alive in me. And I am free in Jesus' name. I will live, I will not die. I will declare and lift you high, Christ revealed, and I am healed in Jesus' name. God is fighting for us, God is on our side, He has overcome, yes, He has overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved, Jesus, you are here. You're carrying our burdens, covering our shame. He has overcome, yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. I will live, I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ alive in me. And I am free. Sing it. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated, oh, and we will shout it out, shout it out. This is what it's saying. God is fighting for us. He's pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. I will live, I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ alive in me, and I am free in Jesus' name. I will live, I will not die, I will declare and lift you high. Christ revealed, and I am healed in Jesus' name. Sing it, God. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated. We will shout it. We will shout it out. Shout it. Sing it again. God is fighting for us. He's pushing back the darkness, lighting up that kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated. 
One more time. Here we go. Sing it again. God is. God is fighting for us. Pushing back the darkness. Lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated. And we will shout it out. Shout it out. Sing. I will live. I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ alive in me. And I am free in Jesus' name. I will live. I will not die. I will declare and let you hide. Christ revealed and I am healed in Jesus' name. to give him some praise. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're my song in the battle, my song in the storm. I'll hold to your promise. You'll never leave me alone. So I surrender my worship, and I won't hold back my praise in every season. I've learned to give thanks, give thanks, give thanks unto the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Sing it again, sing. Give thanks, give thanks unto the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Surrender my worship, and I won't hold back my praise in every season. I've learned to give thanks, give thanks, give thanks unto the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. situation. Sometimes I forget that our God is more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. So I believe that if we just be still and let him know that I am here, I'm waiting for your calling. I'm waiting for your healing. I'm waiting for your deliverance. God, I know I'm struggling. God, I know I'm going through a hardship, but God, I will be still and know that you Oh, oh, be still. Stand still. Stand still. Stand still. The battle is the Lord's. The victory is yours. Stand still. Stand still. Stand still. Stand still. The battle is the Lord's. The victory is yours. Stand still, 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 stand still
enemy has been defeated and death couldn't hold you down we're gonna lift our voice in victory we're gonna make our praises loud the enemy has been defeated and death couldn't hold you down we're gonna lift our voice in victory we're gonna make your praise clap our hands and praise him this morning. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is our name in all the earth. 
You are worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Just a, just a little bit more. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Raise your voice. Shout unto the Lord. Give him thanks this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is how I fight my battles. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I know there's a warfare going on in our world today. Amen. And uh, we all are a part of it. Amen. But you know, the Bible says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. It's very important for us. Turn to your neighbor and say, do you understand? <laughs> Repentance is a powerful thing. Saying you're sorry is a powerful thing. And it's really important that we're able to tell God that we're sorry and repent of our sins. Mark the first chapter this morning, if you will, please. Mark chapter 1. Amen. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for your worship unto the Lord, the King of Kings. It sets the table of his word. His word is important for our lives. And uh, nothing like him. If you've got a need this morning, I promise you God can meet that need. If you've got a sickness this morning, I promise you God is more than able to minister a healing touch to you. He is, as the scripture says, he is the balm in Gilead. He is the great physician. Amen. And he's able. He is able. Able. And so we believe in him. And because he lives, we can live. Amen. I, I want to be alive in Christ. I want to be dead to this man, but I want to be alive in Christ. Praise God. Let's, let's look at the Word of God here this morning. I want to begin reading in verse 14. And uh, when you begin to read here, it is just beginning the baptism. You read about the baptism of our Lord Jesus. We read about the temptations, a little thing about what he went through for 40 days. Tempted of Satan, amen, was with wild beasts, angels ministered unto him. And in verse 14... We begin to read, now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Everybody say, repent ye. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God is near. So repent and believe or believe in the gospel. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come, come ye after me, and I will make you fishers of men, right? And straightway they forsook, amen, they left their nets, they left their job, they left their occupation, and followed him. And when he had gone a little bit further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. Straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. Amen. This is a time where Jesus called these four fishermen from their occupation, amen, to another occupation. I'm going to take you from being a fisherman to be a fisher of men. And in this day and time we live, we are all, look at your neighbor and say, we are to be fishers of men. Humanity, men, women, young people, Boys, girls, children, that is our occupation as a child of God, is to be a fisherman, but a fisher of men. Lord God, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy. We thank you for your love and kindness that you have so graciously shown to us. 
Thank you for your presence that's in this house today. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for receiving our worship and our praise and our adoration unto you. Thank you, Lord, for reciprocating and coming back and blessing our hearts and our lives with your presence. And I pray, God, for the next little bit that your spirit would move in a powerful way. And before we leave this place, somebody, amen, will be able to leave saying, I have been touched by the master. My life has been changed. Amen. God, help us speak your word with truth. Amen. Let your anointing be upon us. Amen. Let our ears be touched that we might hear. Let our hearts be open to receive your word. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. And everybody say amen. One more time while you're being seated, can you put your hands together for the Lord? I feel like in our world today, a lot of people lack Purpose. Purpose. Everybody say purpose. Purpose is a, is a uh, critical part of our life because sometimes you see people that are kind of mulling around or walking around. They don't really have any aim uh, in their life. They're just kind of testing this and testing that. But when you develop a purpose in your life, it's going to change you. And in our scripture, we find the Lord as he's walking down by the wayside. And here he finds two men who we know now as Peter and Andrew. And they are fishing here in uh, the waters. And I don't know how well they were doing, but no doubt at their, at their best, they were the least among men. And when you notice what the Lord says to them, he says, look, I want you to come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Now, he could have said, he could have said, you know, I kind of see what's going on right now and it doesn't look like, hey man, you're fulfilling your purpose. It doesn't look like you're catching a lot. But how about let's changing your occupation? And you follow me for a while, and I'll teach you how to become a fisher of men. I don't know about you, but I like going fishing with somebody that knows what fishing is all about. Amen. I, I like them uh, to say, hey, try this or try that, or if you'll do this or you'll do that, uh, you'll catch things. Because I am the kind of person that... When I go fishing with people, I will just kind of wait and see. And then finally when they get that spot where they're getting bites, that's when I'll take my reel out and start throwing. To me, because I'm thinking I'm just not going to waste my time just keeping on casting and rolling in and casting. I'll wait till they start getting bites and then I'm going to whoop, I'll fish their pond. But he said, I will make you fishers of men. I don't know if they understood what that meant at that time. But, but I do notice that they did not hesitate to get out of that boat. Because the Bible says they forsook. Everybody say forsook. They forsook their nets and followed him. Let me parallel with your relationship with Jesus Christ. When you follow him with purpose, you will forsake the things of the world. And you will take up the cross. And you will follow after him. Amen. He will make you fishers of men, but you have to have a purpose that says, you know what? I'm going to leave that stuff behind and I'm going to follow him and learn from him. And once again, this was their livelihood. And for them to so quickly uh, get up and walk away from it, forsake it, 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 it tells us a lot about what they thought of their life at this point. Amen. Christ knew their hearts. And he knew that without him, they had no purpose. Come on, say it. Without Christ, I have no purpose. Without God in my life, I have no purpose. Without God directing me, I will lose my way. I will fall apart. 
I will go back to the old lifestyle and begin to try to find solace in it. Amen. But when you follow Christ, amen, you're going to gain purpose. Because the text gives us a great parallel, if I might say this morning, about how Christ found us. Look at your neighbor right now and say, where did he find you? May I say today that we were the least among men. Amen. Even at our greatest moments. Whether we thought we had the biggest catch or not. Amen. We were still empty inside of our soul. Because we were without purpose. I want to thank God today that he is continuously walking down by my wayside. Amen. In my life. Amen. I I thank God that he's seen all of my faults. Amen. He's seen all of my problems. He's seen all of my crisis. He's seen all of my needs. And he said, you know what? If you'll follow me, amen, I'm going to give you a a walk of purpose where you will look at this stuff in a different way. Amen. Knowing that in that that you can do nothing, but with me in you, amen, you can have confidence, amen, that everything's going to be okay. I'm glad he walks by, you know, it's like the old song, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. Amen. You have to realize today, amen, it is a relationship. Amen. It's not a relationship void of the Word of God, but it is a relationship that's full of the Word of God that constantly speaks to us and leads us and guides us and puts us in a place of real purpose in our life. Oh, God, help us today. He took us, amen, you and I, who were fishing for something in the world's pond, Really, we were fishing for anything that would bring some happiness to our life. Anything that would bring some peace to our lives. But seemingly every time we thought we got a big catch, it got away. There's nothing more frustrating than having something on the hook and you can't get it in. It gets away, right? Amen. That's the way the world's going to do you all the time. You're going to try to catch something. Oh, that's going to bring happiness. That's going to bring peace. That's going to bring satisfaction. Only to get it so far and it gets off the hook and puts you back in that place of depression again. Hear me today. Amen. Understand this. And I want us to, if you don't get anything else, get this. You can fish all you want in the devil's pond out there. Amen. But what you're looking for will always get away. Amen. What you need, amen, is somebody that can come by your way. Amen. And show you how to do fishing, but do it in a different way. Come on. Turn to your neighbor and say, God wants to help us today. I want God to make me a fisher of men. If we become fishers of men, there are no empty pews, amen, or seats in the house today. If we become fishers of men, the altars aren't void of people praying and repenting of their sin. Amen. If we become fishers of men, the waters of baptism will always be stirred with people that are buried in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sin. If we are here with purpose, amen, we will see people filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. Amen. If we are here with purpose, we understand the importance of the death, burial, and the resurrection. If we are here with purpose, we understand what it's what it's all about to give Him our everything. Amen. To give Him that offering of praise and thanksgiving. If we are here with purpose, we realize and understand the importance of why we sing and worship God. Because it sets the table for a moving of the Spirit of God into people's lives that are here that may not have purpose yet. Sorry. Sometimes I just get in that spirit of ranting and raving. But you can fish in that devil's pond all you want to. But you're never going to catch anything that's going to bring happiness and peace and strength in your life. But friends, I'm going to tell you something right now. If you will follow Jesus, if you will hear his call, if you will obey that call and you'll walk after him, he's going to give you peace, amen, like you never knew. He's going to give you that joy. He's going to give you that happiness. You're going to be able to lay your head on a pillow at night and no matter what's going on in this world, you're going to be able to close your eyes and 
you're going to be able to say, Lord, if you come in the next few moments, uh, hey man, I'll see you there. Hallelujah. He took us. Look at your neighbor and say, he took us. And he gave us purpose. And he gave us identity. And he said, I'm going to give you a job. I'm going to teach you how to do it. Amen. You put those nets away, you're not going to need that kind of a net. Amen. But I'm going to teach you what to say. I'm going to teach you what to do. Amen. I'm going to teach you how to win them over. I'm going to teach them how to whet their appetite. And they're going to want to hear more about what you got to say. I'm going to teach you uh, to become a fisher of men uh, with purpose uh, and identity. Doesn't matter what comes our way or what we gain or lose in this life. Why? Because I know why I'm here. How many knows why you are here? You don't have to raise your hand, but in your mind, do you know why you are here? Come on, let me say it this way. Don't spoil this moment with saying to yourself, yeah, I know what I should be doing and I know how I should be fishing. I, I know how I, how I should be acting. But yet, at the same time, amen, I, I, I really, I'm really not in tune with God's purpose right now. Can I say to you, this is, there is no better day than right now than getting connected with the purpose of God in your life. There is no better day than right now to say, you know what, Lord Jesus, uh, amen, I want you fully connected in my life. Uh, amen, I want your uh, GPS in my life. Uh, I want you to lead me. I want you to guide me. Uh, I want you to direct me. Uh, amen, I want you to be greatly uh, involved in my life uh, so that I know I can fulfill the purpose that you have placed uh, in my life. The thing is, it's a choice. Brother Bobby, it's a choice. We, we either accept that or we reject that. Come on. I, I, I appeal to you and I plead with you this morning. Uh, amen. Accept the purpose of God in your life. Don't reject it. Uh, amen. Be willing to do what God has called you to do. Amen. Don't, don't, don't turn it by the wayside and say, I'm not ready for that. I'm going to have to change my life. I'm going to have to change my direction. I'm going to have to change the pond that I'm fishing in. Is this okay this morning? So it doesn't matter what comes my way. It doesn't, gain, it doesn't matter what I gain or lose. Uh, amen. I just want to know why I'm here. I want to know what is the purpose. Uh, amen. I know, I know who I serve. I know who I serve. Why? I know him. Why? We have a personal relationship. I mean, has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You talk to him. <laughs> hey, the song, song says it this way. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. For the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. You're not going to find joy and peace except in a relationship with Jesus Christ. The world will disappoint you. The world, the world is not going to satisfy you. Oh, it'll bring you pleasure for a season. Oh, it will bring you happiness for the moment, but when it's all said and done, that's not going to matter. You're going you're to plunge back down into uh, that valley of despair, or, or what am I going to do now? But when you are connected with Christ, no matter if you're in the valley or on the mountaintop, he says, hey, lo, I am with you all the way to the end. No matter what you're facing or going through, I will walk with you. I will talk with you. We will have a conversation. I will lead you and I will guide you. It's 
what it's all about. Because when you become soul-minded, amen, that's when the purpose begins to click in your life. So, everybody say soul-minded. Soul-minded, Brother Griff. Amen. That means, man, my heart. I, I'm, I'm in tune. I want, I, I want to, he's made me a fisher of men. And so I be, I've got to get that in my mindset that simply says, hey, amen, being, being a fisher of men is not an occupation where you can just kind of come and go and never have any gain. But a fisher of men, when you fish, when you fish, elder, when you fish, it's not for me at least. I don't like to leave empty hand. At least, let's, at least let me catch a tadpole. <laughs> at least let me catch a tadpole. I don't, you know, to where if they, did you catch anything? I want to be able to say, yeah, man, I did. I caught a, I caught a big one. Well, how big was it? Oh, probably about like that. Well, that's not very big. What's the biggest one I caught? But we have to realize, Brother Darren, we've got to realize that God has called us into his marvelous light so that we might fulfill the purpose that he has for us. And we can say, I don't have it. But that's why he called them away from the nets. He called them away from their occupation. He brought them out into a territory that was unfamiliar to them. And he said, I'm going to teach you to become fishers of men. I'm going to take you from a temporal setting to something that will make a difference through all of eternity. Because he lives. Come on, say it with me. Because he lives. Because he lives. That's what's so important. That's why we're here today. Amen. Because he lives. Amen. In John 21, 3. So, so, once again here, you're talking, you're talking in, in, in this scripture, you're talking after, after the death of Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden things changed. Something happened. It wasn't the same. Amen. It wasn't, it wasn't like it used to be. It was, it was just totally, totally, totally different, uh, amen, than, 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 than it had been. Amen. Jesus had been with them. Amen. Jesus had been with them. Now he went to the cross. Peter had denied. Peter had denied the Lord three times, thrice. Amen. He did exactly what Jesus said he was going to do. Peter, you're going to deny me thrice before the cock crows. Oh, no, I will never do that. I will never deny you, Lord. No, sir, I won't. How many of us have said the exact same words? But when we were in the moment, we shut our responsibility and kind of went into our cocoon. We didn't want to be recognized, Sister Anderson, as being one of them. The little maid, the little maid said, Elder said, aren't you one of them? And Peter was like, oh, no, no, I'm not one of them. Well, I think I've seen you with them. Oh, no, I'm not one of them. Bible said he cursed. See, that's what happens to us when we're saved. And we're getting a little low on the Spirit of God. Sometimes things make us mad and we'll slip up. How many's ever done that? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> but then in, 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 in times of religious times, Brother Dan, we have, our, we have our Christian cuss words. But we get away from that. Peter got away from that. Now the resurrection had done. Amen. He had, he had already cut the high priest's ear off Malachus in the, in the garden. And Jesus was like, what, what are you doing? And reached down and puts it back up. I mean, if I was one of those guards then and I seen a miracle like that transpire, I think I would have said, hey, I'm out of here. You, you got, <laughs> I'm not touching this guy. He just put his ear back on. See, there are some things I'm reading, and I'm thinking, man, you people were pretty tone deaf. You see a miracle like that, and now you're still going to take him? Do you not know now, if he put that ear back on, he could just say, die, and they would all fell over dead. 
But no. So here was Peter denying. Here was Peter in a situation. Now Christ had been buried. He had been on the cross. Now he's all forlorn. Amen. And it comes to a time in John 21 and chapter 21 and verse 3. Amen. Here the resurrection day had happened. And Jesus appears to his disciples. And now in this verse it says, Simon Peter saith unto them, I go fishing. Now let me go back just for a moment to verse 1. After the unbelief of Thomas, all this stuff, after these things that had transpired, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel of Cana, Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I, everybody say I. Say it again, I. I I go a fishing. Literally said, I'm going fishing. I don't care what anybody else says, I'm going fishing. He's dead. He's been put in the grave. (laughs) Come on, I'm going fishing. Everybody say, I'm going fishing. Hey, man, I'm going fishing. They say unto him, hey, Pete, if you're going, we're going to go with you. And they all went forth and entered into the ship immediately. And that night, they caught nothing. In other words, if I might put it in my terminology, they were out of purpose. They had been trained now to become fishers of men. But because of the death of Christ, which he said was going to happen, now they find themselves back at what he would have interpreted as the beginning. They went forth, entered into the ship, caught nothing. Everybody say nothing. Now what's happening with Peter? Now there's a change again. He was so happy and content and full of life and purpose. But now... He is ready to go back to the old life of emptiness. Listen, let me tell you something right now. If you don't listen to anything else this preacher's telling you, the world has... Have you ever eaten something before that an hour later you were hungry? Two hours later, right? What kind of food do you usually eat when you'll say a couple hours later, I'm hungry. For me, it's Chinese. I don't know what they put in that stuff, Brother Jones, but man, it kicks in gear about two hours later and says, I'm hungry. And and look at me. I don't miss meals. So when when it says, I'm hungry, I'm going to find something to eat. Right? Amen. You know, I, I, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I, 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 I need something. I need sustenance. I need this. But he goes back. He goes back to that place. Uh, and, 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 and he's empty. There's nothing there. Understand. He has seen miracles. Signs. Wonders. Eyes being opened. Dead people being raised. Lame made to walk. Withered hand coming out. You name it. Uh, they were a part of the miraculous. Uh, they seen the 5,000 fed with two fish and five, five loaves and two fishes. Uh, they seen the uh, absolute uh, notorious uh, miracles. But yet what happened? Uh, now they're in a place uh, to where they're like, oh, we don't have hope. He's gone. He's been uh, crucified. He's in a grave. Uh, he's gone. They lost the word that they had been given that said this is what's going to happen. What made the difference? Christ had been crucified. Now it seems that once again, life, life, everybody say life. Life is the winner. And once again, his life is pointless. Once again, his life is without purpose. And so I'm going back fishing again. That's what I did before. I'm going back to that. That's the only thing I knew before. Just existing. 
I thought about this scripture and I, I think I can understand maybe where Simon was coming from. You know, you know, without Christ, I can see a man or a woman that's lost everything. Families, kids. I don't understand the pain of that. And all of a sudden they sit down and they consider a multitude of things. And they don't know what to do. The only thing that gave them purpose in life is now gone. And that there's, no, there's no reason to think that they might ever have it again. I, I don't know. I, I listen to these people in, in, in North Carolina and Georgia and Tennessee and, 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 and Virginia and, and Florida. And I listen to them talk. And, and sometimes the look on their face uh, is simply saying, uh, I lost everything I had. The best phrase I hear when they all start talking that is this, I've lost it all, but I didn't lose my life. Let me tell you something right now. When you come to Christ, you may, you may lose it all in the world, but the only thing that matters is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because as far as eternity is considered, your relationship with Jesus Christ is going to make that door of hope open to you, amen, to where you Amen. As a new believer in Christ Jesus. Uh, old things have passed away. Behold, you have become brand new. Amen. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Uh, amen. You have to get a hold of that and say, you know what? It makes no difference what happens in my life. I have purpose. You can't be that person that lives for their job. Come on. I, I want to I wanna bear down on this. Look at your neighbor and say, your job is great. You got to have your job. It puts food on your table. Puts a roof over your head. Puts gas in a car for you to drive. It does all those things. It's a great thing. You must do it. But I will tell you this. Amen. That's a necessity as far as this life is concerned. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, sometimes you can lose it all. Amen. And get in that place. Why try? Why bother? What's the use? I'm just going to quit. I give up. Sometimes you'll work your whole life and something happens or somebody comes along or you suffer, you toil, thought. Hey Amen. You had that tough, that tough trial and after a trial, trouble, trouble. Only to one day lose it all. Even if you keep it, you'd one day die and just leave it to somebody else. See, that's what the world, that's, that, that's what the world lives for. And that's why a lot of people think, hey amen. But, man, everybody say thanks be to God. That we can have purpose and we can have hope. We can have a, a life that we're waiting on for all eternity. Why? Come and help me out here. If you come, I'll shut up. Remember that old song? Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear. Where'd it go? Gone. And I know. I know, Brother Tommy. I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. He leads me. He guides me. And you know, here's my promise to you today. If you will take his hand... Because I promise you, his hand is stretched out for you today. If you'll take his hand and let him lead you and guide you, man, he will make you. Paul said he made me a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. He'll open that door of hope to you. He is that door of hope. And he'll bring you out of the world that you know. And he will give you that peace. Amen. Let's all stand together. I promise you, as, 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 as we open these altars this morning, amen. If you need baptism in Jesus' name today for the remission of your sins, it is important. Baptism is important. We, 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 have, we have water. We have water right here. We got water. Wow. It's about 94 to 96 degrees. It's not cold water. It's warm water. Right. So you don't have to worry about that. We can put you down in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins. 
You repent of your sins, we can bury you in his name for the remission of those sins. That's what he's here for. God wants to bring something into your life today. He wants to bring purpose. No matter what the world has dealt you, no matter what the blow was, Christ says, I'm here to give you purpose and to change your occupation and to make you a fisher of men. If you want to be a fisher of men today, I'm going to open these altars for you to come. If you want to be a fisher of men, if you want to obey the command of God to say, come and I will make you fishers of men. Come on. If you need to repent of your sins, these altars are open for you. If you need the Holy Ghost, these altars are open for you. And saints of God, these altars are open to you if you're willing to come and just pray and ask God. Lord, help me to be stronger in you. I, I, I want to be that fisher of men. I want that in my life. I want that in my life. Help me, God, to be what you want me to be. That's it. Come on, all over this place. All over this place. Come on. Can you raise your hands where you're at and just talk to the Lord? Just appeal to Him today. Can you appeal to him today and say, Lord, I want you in my life. I want your help, oh God. I want your strength, oh God. Help me to be what you want me to be. Help me to be strong. Help me to apply it into my life. Come on, that's it. Raise your voice all over this place. We're going to sing. Oh, yeah. Take it away. Well, I give you praise. Well, I give you praise. Well, 